Hi, this is Lonya with another StarCraft 2 commentary, and this is a game from the Korean ladder between OGS Top as the Red Terran in the 3 o'clock position, and Moonglade as the Blue Zerg in the 9 o'clock position. And OGS Top, obviously, a member of the OGS clan who Team Liquid is bunking with over in Korea while playing in the GSL. And he made it into the first GSL, but not the second. Lost out to Fruit Dealer, which not too shabby, considering Fruit Dealer went on to win that. And his opponent Moonglade on Australian playing on the Korean server apparently deciding that the Southeast Asia and North American servers aren't good enough for him and maybe wanted to get some experience in. I don't know whether he is doing anything related to the GSL. He did play in HGH Invitational in the beta and he was a World Cyber Games competitor for Warcraft 3 before StarCraft 2 amongst other things. So him sticking with the Zerg, playing with the Koreans, possibly trying to go against a higher caliber of opponent and interestingly OGS Top putting down a supply depot here instead of on his front door so he's not going to try and wall in with that so he might be at a bit of a risk if Moonglade was in close position to decide to go for a rush, obviously he's not so slightly interesting decision there but it looks like he doesn't want to use a supply depot on the front door and now we do have a barracks going down so he's going to try and do a bit of a wall in possibly with another barracks or a factory on that front door but that will come a bit later and neither player scout each other on the ground yet but Moonglade does know where top isn't so he knows that they're not close by air, he knows he's either going to be in a decent position with in terms of economy through far distances or as he's scouting now he's going to see if he's in a close distance which obviously isn't and top getting down a gas so that might be for an eventual factory once he's got enough gas to build that and Moonglade's going to know exactly where he is, he's going to be pretty comfortable in terms of getting this hatch me down 14 hatch at his natural and he's not even got his pull down yet, that's how confident he is, doesn't feel the need to do that, so he knows where his opponent is, cross the map, not going to be able to put on too much early pressure, now he finally gets his pull down, and command center, going to knobs of command, I'm just a marine coming out at the moment, so top knows as well from that SCV that it's the far distances, both players are probably going to go at least right at the start for a fairly economic game, not going to feel too much pressure, another supply dip again and again, not that that wall, the drone comes in, going to scout and not taken out by that marine just manages to get through he's going to see exactly what there is and exactly what there isn't just the one gas up at the moment takes that second gas might be a bit of a pain for top if he was going to go for a factory build with some heavy upgrades or heavy gas units but factory going down just a bit of space there for an add-on and the drone just going to be able to sit there and do whatever it wants basically for a while and the SUV equally in the base of Moonglade going to see that that pool's only just gone down see the quite late gas for Moonglade and will he manage to save the drone or will it go down? With one marine he should be able to escape that drone out of there but that factory still not quite complete yet. No wall off so the drone could escape if he does cancel it fairly soon. And a couple of overlords moving into position as well so they're going to be kind of quite exposed. And a command center so both players going for the macro game that early pool I mean sorry, early hatchery and the quite quick command centre just one factory so not going for a 1-1-1, one, 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 not going for too much early pressure getting that command centre up so it looks like we're going to have a helian harass and he did like that extracting finish and a tech lab going down so it'll be interesting to see whether he does decide to go for blue flame helians off one factory with no reactors anywhere or something else so I'm not completely sure what he's going to be doing there and the Zergling speed just started, Queen's out at one hatchery and a spine crawler going down so it looks like Moonglade is expecting that there might be a Hellion coming at some point in the future. So he's got that spine crawler up pretty early for defence, not deciding to make a Roach down just yet. So it looks like he's going to go and rely on the spine crawler and maybe some Lings and the Queens for defence. Not expecting too many Hellions since he's only seen one factory. And it looks like we do have a Hellion coming out and he's not getting the blue flame upgrade and he is getting a second gas. So double command center going down so he's going for a very macro oriented game and the SV just parked up here ready to get a layer scout see if that third base goes up so top going for a really heavy macro game and this could catch him out if Moonglade kind of doesn't and decides to put on some pressure and especially I'm presuming this overlord can't see, no it can see so he's moving another overlord in in fact so these two overlords are going to see the double command center and that basically gives Moonglade the all clear to go and put on some pressure with his own stuff. He knows that Moonglade's, I mean sorry, he knows that Top's not going to have too much stuff and a tank coming out which is also kind of a bit strange. He's going to have no anti-air and we've got a layer coming up so if he gets some mutilisks out then he's going to have 
not really much that Top can do. He's not even got that command center down at the moment at his expansion. He's got the two gas up. He's got not even as many SCVs. So this two command center is a bit strange and I'm not quite sure why Top's doing it because it's not going to get him any real benefit at this point in the game. And sorry, I'm Mr. Hellion going in there. Getting taken out by Zerglings. The second gas going up. I'm presuming that Top didn't managed to scout necessarily all of what was going on. Hasn't seen that gas going up, hasn't seen what I presume is the spire, just gonna eat up the spire going up so he doesn't know the spire's there. Lots of gas going up, so easy mutilist build against basically three command centers and not much else. No anti-air, hardly any marines, some tanks being built and top basically has lost his game already I'd say because he can't put on any pressure, he's already behind in economy despite having those three command centers. He's kind of behind on income except for the mules allowing the turn to catch up ever so slightly. But really, no engineering bay down, no turrets going down because of no engineering bay. Even though the Spire hasn't finished yet, he's got a bit of time to do that. It does look like he's getting quite a lot of gas so he might be getting an armory. No, he's putting an engineering bay down and now he's going to get the armory down so he's going to get some thaws out to try and go against those mutalists. But really I think he's too far behind already just because he kind of went for a heavy economy and he's going to be pretty susceptible he's not going to be able to use that third command center for anything at the moment so it's basically just almost a waste of minerals at that early stage because he can't put it anywhere and cover three bases at the same time with almost no forces and he can't produce enough turrets to do that he thaws are too slow to get between the bases he doesn't have enough marines he's producing two more factories so he's going to really pump the Thors, but plus one attack already going up, six Mutalists on the way, some Lings up, which might be able to deal with some of the units, but quite a few Siege Tanks. I mean, four Siege Tanks against Mutalists, three Command Centers, only two bases, and the third now going up for Moonglade. Tops doesn't even see that with the SCV at the moment, so kind of almost bad positioning there. And really, it's just a case of waiting for these Mutalists and assuming they can do the damage and assuming he doesn't get enough turrets up, he does have some turrets going up in the base, in the main base, nothing at the expansion at the moment. No falls on the way just yet. Terran weapons level 1, oh he's supply blocked. He doesn't have even tech labs on these other two factories so, oh here come the Mutalists coming in, going to stop production of supply depots as well. Turret really out of position, moving these SUVs around the turret, still not going to be able to do too much. He's not quite supply cap, but he's got two unfinished supply depots. And that force still can't start. Bad position. Three supply depots, in fact, that we're building and didn't manage to complete. So that held off that thought for quite a while. Even without using any abilities to stop it being produced. And only now are tech labs going down on those other two factories. They could have been gone down a long time ago. And trying to produce some more turrets. Not able to pull up turrets. Stopping mining completely, basically, at this expansion. Now, finally, top head on drones. I mean, sorry, head on workers. Got more SCVs and drones. And he's got three command centers doing mules, but he's not able to produce anything to go into these mutalisk. And all these SCVs are not mining whatsoever. There's what, 25 maybe? Or something around there, just up there, not mining at all. And he's not even touching this worker, loop, worker line, but it doesn't really matter. Because one's not mining, the Thor finally out, so he really should pull away with these mutalisk. While well, he still can. Just 10 mutalisk out at the moment, but. If he goes for these siege tanks, well, there's basically nothing defending them, nothing in this bunker. That's been salvaged. A few marines. He could have taken down those marines, possibly. Could have gone for the siege tanks. Instead, he's going to pull away, which is also pretty sensible, save the units. But he can't really put on any pressure at the moment. So, top, because of that, kind of. The mutalists didn't do much. They didn't attack here, which was completely open. There were no turrets. There were just three marines. There was no Thor. There were the siege tanks to take out easy enough. And then he could have sent the Zerglings to support. Instead, going for that main base, which was starting to get some turrets, it was closer to the factories for the Thors. Well, possibly closer, maybe not, but he did stop the Thor production. And now these siege tanks kind of cut out slightly in the open ahead of these Thors. If it's good, he might be able to take out at least one of these siege tanks. No, he doesn't manage to take out any, I don't think. Or his other siege tank that he killed. No, I think he might, might have killed one, and possibly a marine. But it looks like Top finally moving out of that third command. I think good command center. Going to take the goal now. He's managed to tear it up. He might be in a decent position since Moonglade might end up going a bit behind, but Moonglade's got his fourth base coming up as well. 
So it's going to be 3 against 4, but the goal is going to give the town the advantage if he can get enough production facilities down to just basically spam a load of units. But a lot of Roach is being produced now. So he's produced those Mutalisks, only produced about 10 total, I think. And now he's going to switch to Roach. Wasted basically quite a few minerals on all these turrets. And idle SCVs, not the best. Pretty even still on the work account, but it looks like they've all been transferred over here to produce a lot of or get a lot of minerals, but he doesn't really seem to have the production facilities that he needs, so he's going to have a lot of mineral income, but nothing to produce marines out of it. And really, marines are pretty effective if you can kind of control them well against the mutilists. A lot of siege tanks, they're going to be helpful. These Thor's quite far back, but the Thor's might be slightly out of position. He might be able to take down the tanks with mutilists, kind of go and kill a couple of tanks and run away, or he's just going to charge in with everything at the same time, try and kill as much as he can, just seeing those Mutalisk over the siege tanks, all the siege tanks go down, pretty much no losses, and the roaches, there's so many roaches just going to come in, eat up these doors, the Mutalisk don't really matter, and then all the SUVs are going to die, not even able to repair the doors in time, and basically Top was a bit too greedy at the start of the game, didn't produce enough units, kind of got held back, stopped his production later on, wasn't able to take that third base on my use of that command center, and then just a mass, mass roach for so many roaches, just so effective, one one upgrades on the roaches, one nought on all these mech units and everything's just going to die to this mass roach and he really doesn't have anything to defend against 